Happy Thanksgiving weekend from all of us here in Norm Nathan's Vault of Silliness and the Teen Canteen. A Thanksgiving staple is on tap for our episode today. The Swell Music Quiz, also known as Music with Turkeys. Mike Epstein is producing. We begin with a declaration from Norm, and then it's on to the game. Ed Mullen is in studio. Jack Hart in traffic, drinking his radiant roasted coffee. I'm on the phone, desperate and lonely on Thanksgiving Day. My cousins, Taylor and Bianca, had the chicken pox. I had never had them, so I stayed home. This is an audio asterisk. Let's check the footnotes. I ended up getting them in January. I was out of work for, I think, 10 days. Painful stuff. And there were a bunch of big snowstorms which I had to keep going outside to move my car because of snow emergencies and parking vans. Now, I had some pox on my body, but they must have been inside me like crazy because I could barely move. The struggle to get in and out of the car was not fun. I wore three scars around my face because I needed to speak to a tow operator because I was quarantining. His window was down when I told him my tale of woe. He smiled and rolled it up so that it was only open a crack. I said, don't make me laugh. It hurts when I laugh. Adult chicken pox is not a good time. As the saying goes, what doesn't kill you makes you itchy. Ed Mullen says hello to his wife, Patricia. Two years ago on this very program, Ed proposed. And now finally it's on to the quiz. Categories a rock and roll, jazz and big band, musical comedy, and Christmas music. Ed explains the rules. Good thing, because I still don't understand them. And our prize, as always, is a poorly written, badly copied, though highly coveted, junkie certificate of award. We take a total of 35 calls. It begins with Fred from Medford, then we go on to Sam, Bob, Paul, Chuckles, Ronnie, Tom, Glenn, Chris, Rick, Joe, Mike, Craig, Scott, Dave, Carlene, Irene, Paul. Then a brief traffic report with Jack and an Osco drug commercial, and then we close the first part of the tape with Dave and Victor. Side B. We pick up with the end of Victor's call, and then we go to Linda, Louie, Dave, Dieter, and a swell music quiz scandal ensues. Next is Lisa, then Glenn, who is in Fairbanks, Alaska, and he's listening to us. He's originally from Marlboro, Massachusetts. He has a 38-foot antenna on his house. Norm asks to put his radio up to the phone, and sure enough, we hear ourselves. Now it's Dave, Steve, Lisa... Brian, Jim, Mary, Sarah, Don, and we close with Bob. Arthur Godfrey makes two appearances and waxes poetic that he smoked 72 packs of Chesterfields, and that is why, today, he's dead. We return after the news to give the answers to the unanswered questions, along with learning that Norm owns the only home in Massachusetts where you need a front end loader to get across the kitchen into the dining room. Black Friday traffic is also discussed, and I recommend a movie. Episode 65, The Swell Music Quiz, doing business as Music with Turkeys, begins in a one, a two, a one, two, three, four. And Bob Raleigh, questions you know, is my personal god, and he's on vacation for the next few days, so I thought I'd just sit in and hope I can smack up some of the goodness that he purveys on this program. Thank you so much. We're going to have some fun because we got the uh, the uh, music quiz known, known affectionately as... The Swell Music Quiz. The Swell Music Quiz. I always forget that word. Swell. <laughs> the swell, swell Music Quiz. That's Ed Mullen who is with us. And also uh, Tony Nesbitt will be playing the game with us. Hi, Tony. He's eating some... He sounds like he's eating some celery over there. Eddie, uh, uh, Tony. Yes? Okay, you were doing exactly what we scream at some <laughs> listeners for doing, for not coming out when I when call on you. What kind of a what kind of a person are you anyway? I'm sorry, I was I was putting some dishes in the sink. I figured, oh well, he's got about fifteen commercials to play before you come. To well, me. we're gonna play we're gonna play several of them soon because it'll be a hit parade of commercials. I know. 
and then I was also rolling around the floor laughing about your personal God too. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I probably have to step in line for you know to be in that kind of a know, situation. Know. You know, as we also have a Jack. Jack Hart will be playing the game with us. Hello, Jack. Hello. Hey, you know, let me get this straight. Is this the Swell Music Quiz or the Swell Music Trivia Quiz? Well, would you stop? Why are you making such a, a complicated thing out of it? What do you think, Ed? Is this the Swell Music Quiz or the Swell Music Trivia Quiz? Hopefully it's a Swell Music Quiz, because if it's not, we have to type over all those certificates. Oh, yeah. No, it's 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 not a trivia thing. This is a, the music quiz. Oh, I see. In well, other words, these are questions on, on music, and they're not necessarily trivia things. Some of them are profoundly important. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you okay. see, I was just getting a, a little antsy about that because I was I had too much caffeine. I was just drinking a cup of coffee, and you know what? Yeah. It was radiant roasted. No kidding. Yes. Oh boy. Everyone you, have a lovely Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, I, I I did. Yeah, I, I spent the uh, the day with uh, the afternoon with my two extremely beautiful and profoundly intelligent daughters. So I suppose the rest of you, whatever you did, probably would rank only second best to that. I stayed home all alone. Did you really? Yep. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, oh we would have invited you. You could have joined us. I came down. I came down with a touch of flojonic. Oh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no. But, <laughs> truth, truth be told, I did stay home alone. Oh. Oh. But did you watch Home Alone? Um. Actually, eating turkey leftovers. Yes, I had that stupid movie on the television. Uh, yeah. What would you had t turkey leftovers on, on Thanksgiving Day itself? Yeah, what? yeah, I couldn't go. You, you probably wanted I couldn't to spend it with my family because my tiny little cousin came down with the chicken pox. I've never had the chicken pox. So what does that mean? You were quarantined? They were well. Everyone else in my family has had the chicken pox. I haven't, so I can't oh. go over there because she was very contagious. Oh, I see. Uh, so Tony, is what you're saying if you have turkey? On Thanksgiving for lunch, by the time you have your dinner and you also have turkey, it's turkey leftovers? It sounds like you started out with turkey leftovers, right? Yeah, that's what I had. Yeah, that's there was no had. turkey at all. It was oh, all I leftovers. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. had a couple of pieces you know, and some, and some veggies and stuff. Yeah, you know, you can go to a turkey leftover store and just get turkey leftovers that are available right away. This way you can sit home. Yeah, and produce, feel, produce turkey leftovers. Yeah, and feel badly for yourself and cry, you know. And, <laughs> Actually, and, it was nice. I just slept all day. That's not, a, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> and prepared for my, my Christmas uh, music, so. Okay, that's, oh, that's right, too. Here, hold on just a minute. Let's do seven or eight commercials, maybe a dozen or so. And then uh, we'll talk about the various categories, how we play the game. Anybody who wants to join us, of course, do call 617-254-1030, okay? And we'll tell you how things are going. Mike Epstein is our producer, so we have an all-star cast of uh, really great people here. Which is unusual to kind of, you know, round up people like this on a holiday. You won't find this on any other program. And just to get this started, Norman, just one quick thing to say. I want to say hello to my wife, Patricia, because it was two years ago, this very night in this very studio that I proposed on the Norm Nathan Show. I was going to bring that up with, with appropriate kind of musical background. Yeah, the ca kid, you remember that, huh, kids? kids got a nice kids. audience there for a holiday yeah, night, yeah, too. Yeah, we do. Yeah, a lot of the kids came in. Well, you know, they they had uh, they they spent the day with their families. In some cases, we got kids who hate their families, so they were kind of anxious to get away from them. And they're here. <laughs> I have no idea why I said that. Anyway, let's uh, let's we'll be back in just a moment. Explain the game and hope that you'll call and uh, win a certificate, a badly misspelled a certificate with ill humor on it, and all kinds. Of, anyway, it'll be fun. A number of categories. Uh, so you can pick whatever the category is that uh, is is, hap is satisfactory with you. The categories are rock and roll, jazz, big band, musical comedy, and Christmas music. Is that right, uh, Tony? Yes. Okay, so that's a general category of Christmas music. And the thing is, uh, you, well, you explain the rules, if you would, Ed, because you're just, just so clear-minded about this. Oh, boy. I'm really tired from eating all that turkey and all that... Stop belly aching with us, you understand? Oh, by the way, Norm, thanks for your pity, too, when I told you my story of woe. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Whoa. Anyway, tell us the rules. So, because uh, every line, just about every line is lit up uh, at 254 1030. Okay. Area code 617. Here we go. <laughs> sorry about that. Here we go. There's three rounds, basically. We'll throw a question on the table and give us a call. If you get it correct, you go on to the next round. The second round is. 
you coming up with a question to try and stump us. And we'll discuss it for about four or five days and get back to you. It'll be about, um, if we can get through the second round, if we get it wrong, then you go to the third and final round, which is a next question proposed by us to you. And if you get it correct, you win a certificate of award. Okay, this is, again, a badly printed cert certificate, uh, but it's, it's kind of fun anyway. So just pick your category. Those categories we mentioned, you have to stick with it for the entire round if you get through the three. And make sure, you know, Christmas music, too. You have to have a Christmas music That's right. question. And, and be, you know, whatever the category you pick, be sure to have a question ready for us. Because very often we'll say, okay, now what is your question? And we'll say, oh, I don't have one. So have one before you begin. And if it's rock or Christmas music or musical comedy or a jazz or big band, just have a question along that same line. Okay? Oh, we're all set to go. Let's get uh, Fred and Medford. Uh, Fred, if you promise me you won't play any of your cockamamie tapes back on the phone, I'd appreciate it. That's a promise. Okay. What, what category would you like? I'd like a rock question, please. A rock question. Okay. Okay. Um... Let's see, what decade would you like, 60s, 70s? It could be any decade. Yeah, well, what would you prefer, 60s, like, 50s? 80s or more reasons, I okay, guess. Okay, 80s. Uh, your first question of the night is this. Stevie Nicks and Don Henley sing a, a top 10 duet uh, in 1981. What was the title of this duet? Stop Dragging My Heart Around? That's not correct. Sorry oh. about that. Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry, Fred. Let's go to a Sam and Newton. You're on WBC, Sam. How you, how you doing? What category would you like? Uh, some recent rock, please. Okay, rock and roll. In nineteen in the eighties, nineteen eighty three, what car was Prince singing about? Uh, is that a Cadillac? Cadillac. Sorry, that's wrong. Oh, that's too bad, <laughs> Sam. I'm too. sorry. Um, I'm doing pretty. I'm two for two. Yeah, I'm playing the game myself. <laughs> did, did you know that the answers to both yeah. of those? Did you know it too? Also, uh, Jack, uh, I knew the one the answer to the second question. Yeah. Okay. See if you know this one. Let's see. This is uh, Bob and Waltham. Hi, Bob. What category? Hi, Norm. Uh, I'll take Christmas music. <laughs> hey, oh. there you go, Ooh. Tony. All right. Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> I heard the bells on Christmas Day was based on a poem written during what American War? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, World War One? No. Mm. Oh, I'm so, I'm sorry. Answer your question? No, because we want to move along, and uh, you know, if you, if in other words, if you get the first question correct, uh, then you ask us a question to see if you can stop us. But otherwise, I, uh, that that kind of slows things down when we have so many people who are calling six one seven two five four ten thirty, including Paul in uh, Canton. Paul, hi. I know. What, you? Good, good, thank you. What category would you like? Uh, I'll try Christmas. Did you want that question or a new question? No, I don't want that history question. <laughs> <laughs> what other title is Adeste Fidelis known by? Oh, come all ye faithful. Very good. Ooh. Okay, now you have a question for us on Christmas music. Um, <clears throat> in the movie White Christmas with Bing Crosby, Rosemary Clooney sang a duet um, with another girl. They sang Sisters. What was the name of... What was her name? Oh, oh, oh. Well, what was the name of the character Rosemary Clooney played? No, no, no. <laughs> Who did she sing the duet with? Oh, I, yes. Okay. Was it her real sister? No. Um, I, I, can't get Dan I can't get Danny Kaye and Bing Crosby out of my mind. Can you? <laughs> um... I think I, I, if nobody else has a has a thought, Please, then I, I ahead, think Jack. at least no, no, one. go ahead. Uh, was it June Allison? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, we flunked on that one, and now one final question on Christmas music. Don't you want to know who it was? Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Vera Allen. Oh yeah, Vera Allen, who did a lot of uh, musicals, movie musicals. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Tony's got got it. One final question for you, and if you get this one, you get the certificate of award. My goodness. How many ladies dancing did my true love give to me? Eight, nine, or ten? Eight, nine, or ten. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. I have 12 of those. <laughs> <laughs> the point is that where along uh, the song did this one come? So what do you say? You've got about five more songs. Uh, nine. 
Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> Very good. good. Good for you. Okay, here's uh, Mike Epstein, who's our producer. He'll take your name and address, and we'll get a certificate of award out to you, which is unsuitable for framing, and you'll really love it. Actually, oh. I only have, have 11 of those questions, because I'm not going to give the question, how many partridges were in a pear tree? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're sort of a process of elimination. Is that the deal? Okay. Let's wow. go to, uh, here's Chuckles in uh, Chelsea. Hi, Chuckles. Oh, hi, Normie. Hello. <laughs> what category would you like, Chuckles? Uh, how about rock? Okay. okay. His uh, rock uh, in the uh, 1960s. How many teardrops did Question Mark and the Mysterians cry in 1966? A million. A million teardrops is. That's not right. Sorry oh. about that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chuckles. Incidentally, any of these questions that were missed. Anybody who comes on, rather than get a new question, unless you want a new question, you can have one. But you're you're more than welcome to to start it off with the answer to any of the questions that are still up there that have not been answered. Uh, Ronnie in Pennsylvania. Nice to hear from you, Ronnie. How you doing? Hi, everybody up there in uh, Turkey Land. <laughs> okay, this, Turkey Land is WBC. That's another name for us. Anyway, what what category would you like, Ronnie? Uh, rock and roll from the '50s. Okay. All right, rock and roll from the 50s. Here's your question. Um, let's see. In uh, Andy Williams had a number one hit song in the same year that Hawaii became a state. The name of that hit song was called the Hawaiian Wedding Song. So what year was that? Oh, that Hawaii became a state. Yeah, he also was singing that song, the Hawaiian Wedding Song. See, I'm trying to remember. I think Hawaii became a state in 1959. Right. You got Ooh. it. Oh, beautiful. What question do you have for us now on, on, a, on a rock area? Who was famous for singing Chantilly Lace? Hmm. Ah, that was the big oh, bopper, J.P. Richardson. Yeah. Chantilly Lace. Bu -bu 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 yeah. Uh, All okay. right, right, you turkeys. You're singing it. Who <laughs> sang it? He just said it, Jack just said it. Yeah, the, the big bopper. That's correct. Okay, Ronnie, uh, thank you very much. Had we not known the answer, uh, we would have asked you one final question, but uh, however, we stopped you cold oh, in your you tracks. Oh, cold. Yeah. Hey, Ronnie, thank you very much. Let's go to... Uh, I'm just curious as to how Andy Williams ever got into... Uh, did he sing a rock and roll song? Well, Jack, it was it wasn't the rock era. I was looking through the 1950s. I was trying to dig up something that was a little unusual. Oh, I some see. connection. Hmm. Okay, here's Tom in Jamaica Plain. Hi, Tom. What category would you like? Uh, I'd like to answer the Stevie Nicks question. All uh, right. Okay. The, uh, yes. First I'll, question of the night. I'll just repeat it. Uh, for every, everybody, Stevie Nicks and Don Henley sing a top ten duet uh, on Stevie Nicks' 1981 album. And the name of that duet was called? Was there a life? Correct. Very good. Very good. Now, ask us a question in the same category, if you would, uh, Tom. All right. In the 60s, there was a, an all-female rock and roll group called the Runaways. There were still two women recording who were in that group. I know. Name them. I know. Go ahead. Lita Ford and Joan Jett. Yeah, you got me. Huh. Okay. Good question, though, Tom. Thank you very, very, very good much. Question. And very good answer there. Tony, let's go to Glenn in uh, Peabody. Hi, Glenn. Hi there. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you doing? Very well. Did you have a good day? Absolutely. A lot good. of food. Okay, good. What, what category would you like? How about rock? Rock category. Okay. Uh, rock in the 70s, 60s? 60s, 70s, 80s, oh, whatever. Great. Um, me and you and a dog named Boo. Oh, boy. Who is me? You got a date, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you and them. Oh, boy. No no, uh, no, no, guess on that no one. No guess on that one. Do you know the we song? Know his grandma was pretty poor. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I've heard it before. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, Glenn, but All right. th thanks very much for trying. I appreciate that. Let's take a little break, and then uh, we'll be back and do, do some. Just the preceding announcement was furnished oh. by Capitol Records. Anyway, uh, <laughs> where did he come from? Anyway, so coming up to 29 after midnight, we're playing the uh, Swell Music Quiz. And our categories, again, rock and roll, big band jazz, musical comedy, or uh, or uh, Christmas music, and we have uh, Tony Nesbitt as the head of our Christmas department. Although he certainly knows all kinds of other music as well. That Beatles story was an, it's a great holiday story. Well, wasn't that it? a wonderful story? I hope they I hope they keep a lot of those stories and put them out in book form, <laughs> so that uh, you know what 
when it's night, especially when if you've had a big blizzard or something happening, you can sit by the fire with your book on swell beetle stories. <laughs> that is so. <laughs> that sounds like a a Bob and Ray routine. They used to tell stories like that. In any event, two five four ten thirty area code is six one seven. Want to put a um, a jazz or musical comedy question on the table to oh, let people know they can no. ask those? Okay. Yes, we can. Well, I will be happy to do that. The instrument played by Max Roach, Art Blakey, and Ray McKinley. They all played the same instrument. So, so tell me, what, what instrument was that? If you want to start with that. And if you want to start with a musical comedy uh, question, uh, wait a minute, I got, I got quite, a, quite a really nifty one here. These new ones? Did you, uh, this did you is, do some work this week? I, I did. I actually did some wow. work today, this week. So I'm just, I am so proud. <laughs> As a matter of fact, some of them were given to me by one of my kids. Uh, there are three musicals this, again, the musical comedy thing, if you want to come along with that category. There are three musical comedy, uh, musicals currently on Broadway that started out as movies. And just name two of them, but they're on Broadway right now. They were first movies, and then, then they made into into musicals, and they're playing Broadway. So that's, that's, the, that's that category. And... Uh, Anyway, I'll, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll give you some big band ones a little bit later on, but let's go to Chris in uh, Lexington. Hi, Chris. Hey, Norm. How are you doing? Hey, pretty good. Thanks. Uh, I think I'll take the Prince question out there already. Okay, I'll just repeat it for everybody. The Prince question is this. In 1983, what car was Prince singing about? Uh, would that be a Corvette? That's right. Little Red Corvette. Excellent. All right. All right, I have a rock question for you guys. Go ahead. Uh, the rock band Rush, are you, are you familiar with them? Mm -hmm. Yep. What is the name of the drummer? Neil Peart. Very good. Okay. You got me. Very good, Tony. Hey, thanks for calling, Chris. Good to talk with you. We'll go to Rick. Uh, Rick is in Canton, Massachusetts. Hi, Rick. Hi, Norm. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Uh, I'd like to answer the question. Uh, does, is he looking for the group of me and a dog named Boo? That's correct. That's, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to same. answer that. Would that be Lobo? You are right. Oh. Excellent. Now, what question do you have for us? Okay, uh, Which in English means wolf. Um, <laughs> Jack says, but thank it, you, <laughs> Jack Webster. Yeah, in Lupo. English, that means wolf. Yeah, Lupo means wolf, too. So mm -hmm. what language is Lobo? Is that Spanish? Okay. Uh, I got a question for you. Okay, we're, okay. we can ignore me. That's okay. <laughs> what, what's your question? I got it's to deal with Christmas. Who sang the, the Christmas song, The Gift Goes On? The Gift Goes On. This is a rock Christmas? Oh, wait, wait a second. Because well, you answered a question in rock, so... Uh, yeah. Yes, it's because cause we have a special category that uh, Tony has on Christmas music. But if this is a rock thing, I suppose it could be either category. Yeah, I, I think. Do, I, do we know the answer to that, uh, to, uh, Jack? You sound like you might know it. I might have. A, would it be Sonny and Cher? No. Oh. It was Sandy uh, Patty. Who was it? Sandy Patty. Well. We got okay, well, one final question then for you, and if you get the answer what, to this. From Christmas or from, or from rock? What should we do, Red? <laughs> um, give, me, give me a, qu a Christmas question. Okay. That's all, right, all right, all right. This is Elma Fudd signing off. A Christmas okay, question. If I can find, uh, come up with a, a semi-rock. Yeah, all right, what the heck, we'll do this. What novelty song squeaked by with a Grammy? Now, get this, a Grammy in 1958. What? What was the question again? What novelty song squeaked by with a Grammy in 1958? Yeah, this was a, in 1958, this was a Christmas uh, kind of rock song. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1958. you know the, the answer to that there, Rick? Mm, I can't think of it, no. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Hey, thank you very much for trying anyway. And again, any of the questions that have not been answered and you would like to start off by answering them, Instead of getting a new question, by all means, do that. And we'll go to Joe in Winthrop. Hi, Joe. You're on WBZ playing the swell music quiz. How you doing, former neighbor? Uh, for, uh, former neighbor. Now, yeah, we're, I'm an old ever and you were Chelsea. Yeah, that's right. And I've only been out. I must remember you because I've only been out of Everett now for, gee, I don't know. It's 50 years or oh, 60 well, years, something like that. Match me. So I wasn't actually a neighbor. Oh, hey, yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. Okay, what, what, uh, what the, category the was you McKinley like? one there. Hey, okay, please. the question, let me, let me repeat the question. What instrument uh, played by Max Roach, Art Blakey, and Ray McKinley? I believe drum. 
you believe absolutely correctly. Yay. Okay, now give me a question or give us all a question in the same uh, category. I, I, I'm more asleep than I am awake. Yeah, There's well, no uh, comments on that, please. No. Give uh, us, give us what, a question. What famous orchestra leader played guard for a football team in the 20s and was in the Rose Bowl? I don't have any idea. Who was that? Horace Height. Oh, Horace Height. Yep. I did. I didn't know that. California. Yeah, that is that is okay. that is that is very interesting. Yeah. Okay, you ready for you ready for a question then? Uh, go ahead, but I won't know it. I'm not that much of a. Go ahead. You're not that much of a what? <laughs> Trivia buff. Okay. Two. The two films were based on uh, big band leaders. Uh, one was the Glenn Miller story, the other was the Benny Goodman story. Who played uh, in the Glenn Miller story? Who played in the Benny Goodman story? Steve the Allen actors. played in one of them. What's that, please? Steve Allen played in one of them. That's right. He was Benny Goodman. Goodman who who yeah. played the Glenn Miller? Oh, Jesus, I shouldn't know that. And I, I have to strike out. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll keep, we'll, well, I'll tell you later. If, oh. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll keep that hanging in case somebody wants oh, okay. to use that. Uh, happy, healthy holidays to all. Happy, ha you healthy too, holiday to you, Joe. Hello, bye-bye. Okay, and I hope he doesn't go right to sleep because this is the, just the beginning of an exciting night. <laughs> He'll miss a whole lot. Uh, Mike. Yeah, hi. Oh, hi, Mike. What, what does it hi. say? Mike, his buggy? What does that mean? <laughs> no, it's uh, Mike on a car phone. Oh, I see. I'm at home with the Yeah, I've, I've listened to your show a lot of times, but I, I've sure never called. But I want to thank you for a lot of the fine shows. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mike. What category would you like? Well, you know, I, when I first turned on, I, I heard Question Mark and the Mysterians. Did someone get that one or not get that one? No. How many teardrops? Well, I question? thought everyone knew they cried 96 tears. You bet. 96 tears okay. is correct. Now, you have, a you have a question for us in that same category. Then. Well, I, I do. Um, a, a very innovative band was one of the first band to record with an electronic instrument that was called a theremin. Do you know what the name of that band is? First band to record with a theremin. Oh. Right, electronic yeah, I, I before know, synthesizer. I know, they're just, they just, there's a movie out. That's yep. right, there's a movie out now. On the, and they, they released an name? album, and uh, yep. they were the first to do it. Okay, the theremin, uh, the theremin, the guy who invented it, was, Leo it, theremin. was it Leo Theremin? Yep. Okay, there's a there's a movie out with with him in it, and uh, right, and they used it for sound effects. Yeah, he, it was in Spellbound, the movie, way, way, way back. First time I'd ever heard it on the yeah, screen. Day, day the Earth Stood Still. It was in that movie. They also. used it there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these the are the first. Delinquent. These Rock were the song first with music, the theremin used. Right, first musicians to use it. Okay. Yeah. Anybody know the answer to that? Mm. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, that is a good question. Should have saw the movie. No, I guess we don't know the answer. Who was that? Well, the obscure group called Lothar and the Hands People. That's not work. And they actually sold, sold a lot of records. Okay, with it. okay good enough. Good enough. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, final question Matt. from you, for, for you, rather. Okay. Is your question, what is Paul McCartney's first name? I think it's John. John is incorrect. So oh, I went down in flames, but so I did get you with you my did. question. Yeah, you, 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 did, you, did, you did very well, Mike. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay, let's go to Craig. In the Newton Craig, if ever I change my name, that's what it's going to be changed to Craig. So manly. Well, sounds all right to me. Yeah. Okay. What what category would you like, Craig? Uh, no, how about 1950s rock and roll? 1950s rock and roll. Okay. Okay. Here you go. Um, let's see. Okay, it's a great question for you. 1953, Big Mama Thornton had a hit record with one of Elvis Presley's biggest songs. Which was Hound Dog. Which was Hound Dog, and you are correct. Excellent. Do you have a question for us? Uh, yeah. How hard a question do you want? <laughs> well, just to ask us a question. Anything at all that you... Yeah, okay. the idea is to try to stump us so that you get that swell certificate. Right. Okay. Well, here's a great question. Uh, who in the 1950s started off as a disc jockey playing music and broke the on-air record for playing over 100... music for over 122 straight hours? See, it couldn't have been me, because I would still be exhausted over that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a well-known disc jockey, then, apparently, huh? No, he became well-known as a, as a musician, as a musical performer, but he started off as a disc jockey. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think it... Jack, this is the part where we start asking him questions so yeah. we can stall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, I think we're going to call ourselves out. <laughs> However... Uh, for a disc jockey to know enough it was about Dick, music. Didn't Dick Van Dyke do that in, uh, in one of the episodes? 
That's right. He the answer is Dick Van Dyke. He, no. he set a record for playing music for yeah. somebody else. This is back in the 50s. Yeah, you know, any disc jockey who became a musician afterwards surely breaks the mold because most disc jockeys don't know even which end of the trumpet to hold. But anyway, <laughs> there's a personal dig I'd like to get in. <laughs> we give up. What is the answer to that, uh, Fred? It was a big bopper, J.P. Richardson. Really? Oh, the big bopper. Right. Oh, no called, kidding. Uh, nice. It was called the J.P.A.T.H.O.N. after sort of after J.P. J.P.A.T.H.O.N. and he broke the existing record by eight minutes. Played okay. for 120, over 122 hours. That's interesting. I didn't know he started out as a, uh, as a disc jockey. Right, in Texas. Okay, here's a final question for you, and if you get this one, you get the certificate. Okay. What group of sisters were regulars on the TV show called Arthur Godfrey and His Friends? <laughs> and it was in 1953. Now, they had several hit songs like Mama's Got the Rhythm and Papa's Got the Blues. Sincerely... <laughs> In sugar time. If you think, fella, you think that's going to make me do my Arthur Godfrey imitation, well, you just, fella, you've got another thing coming. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, another thing. Hold on a minute. I'm not <laughs> through doing my imitation. You you're for Chesterfields, Mr. Godfrey? Chesterfields, yeah. They're wonderful. I smoke 72 packs every single day, which is why today I am dead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, now I'm losing my trend of thought. <laughs> okay. uh, that had to be the McGuire sisters. You're exactly right. The Thank McGuire sisters. We have a winner. Yeah, you have a certificate of award. Hang in there, Mike Epstein. Thank who, you, Norm. Uh, who is in full dress costume tonight, because he gets really dressed up when we have these special music quiz. We'll take your name and address and all that. We'll get a certificate out to you. He's dressed like Pocahontas again. No, he's, he's dressed more like the genie in the Aladdin the movie. <laughs> yeah. The genie? The genie, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's got the effect he's standing in a big bottle. <laughs> I'm so glad I said that. Okay, let's take a little break, and then uh, the, our cast, including uh, Ed Mullen. How you doing? How, how you doing? Uh, Tony Nesbitt. Hello. And the uh, Jack Hart. Hi. And myself, Aloy Zavrilla. <laughs> and Mike Epstein, uh, running the massive control panel. Okay, let's Should go. Should we review any of the questions? I guess we, yeah, we could, yeah. These are some of the questions we have not gotten answers to. Let me do a, well, why don't you do your rock stuff? And we we have some Christmas ones, too, yes, that have not do. been answered? Yes. Oh, okay, tell, tell us what they are, uh, Tony. Oh, well, the very first one was, I heard the bells on Christmas Day was based on a poem written during what American War? And another one was, what novelty song squeaked by with a Grammy in 1958? Okay, and uh, the rock questions? What is Paul McCartney's first name? Oh. And uh, other, other than that, we're all... Uh, we get I, caught up with all the others? Up. All have been answered, okay. I had some uh, musical comedy and some jazz things. Uh, one, one had to do with a couple of uh, uh, three shows on Broadway that are now musical comedies that started out as 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 straight movies and what are those what are the shows in fact if you give me two out of three i think uh, we'd settle for all that uh at least two films were based on big band leaders uh glenn miller's story and benny goodman who starred in them and steve allen uh was identified as the one who was, was benny goodman and i guess we didn't get an answer on the other side which was uh, who was glenn miller in the uh, glenn miller story and uh i think that's I think that's about it, but uh, you can pick whatever category again, rock and roll, Christmas music, big band, uh, musical comedy, jazz, whatever, and we'll go to Scott in New York. Hi, Scott. Hi, Norm. I love your show. Thanks a lot. What category would you like? Um, the uh, Your question, who was Glenn Miller? I mean, who played Glenn Miller? Yes. Um, Jimmy Stewart? Jimmy Stewart did, and now you, we have to stick with that category. Okay. Um, famous jazz trumpeter Maynard Ferguson. Yeah. The question is, uh, what city was uh, he born in, in North America? I know he he was born in Canada. I know. I would guess. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure what part of Canada he's from. Uh, uh, you're on the right track. Well, pardon me. I said you're on the right no, track. I'm, I'm in the right country. No, no, I know he's he narrowed it down to one country in North America. No, <laughs> I know he's, he's, a, he's a Canadian. I, it had to be Ottawa, or Montreal. I, I, I'm guessing. I don't know. Or was it some remote little town like uh, Ibsenikenville or Ontario? <laughs> or, I, I really don't know the the community. Is I, let me say Otto, Ottawa. Uh, that's. I guess it's wrong. It's Montreal. Okay. See, so, you know, I picked two and I, I, I missed. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Okay. Here's a, here's a, uh, here's a question for you. I'm going to give you. Uh, what instrument does Thelonious Monk Jr. play? Not Thelonious Monk. His father was a pianist. Okay. He wrote a lot of stuff. What about Jr.? What what is his instrument? Drums. Drums is actually is right. Wow, exactly winner. right. Correct. Very wow. good. Okay, you have won yourself a certificate of award, which I know you will display proudly up there in New York. Thank you. Very Thank much. you, Norm. Take Thank, you take care too, Dave in Boston. Hi, Dave. You're on WBZ. How you doing, Norm? Good. Uh, rock and roll, please. Okay, Dave, here's your question for you. What is the name of the lead singer of the group Boston? Uh, Brad Delp. Brad Delp is correct. Good. Excellent. Good. Do you have a question for us? Um, yes. Let's see. Uh, who made the album A Wizard, A True Star, and Healing? Is that, is that three different uh, albums? No, yeah, two different albums. A Wizard, A True Star. That's one album, and then Healing's another one by this artist. Huh. Wow. Uh. Uh. Jeez. <laughs> what is the answer to that? Todd Rundgren. Oh, Rundgren. Okay. Right, you got it. Okay, one, and one final question for you for the certificate. Sure. Now we're going to wait on Get you good, Dave. Let me go to the end of the book here. <laughs> Um, oh, here's a good one. What trumpet player, this is from the 60s, what trumpet player had a number one album in 1965, also 66, also 67, and 68? Ooh, what what trumpet, trumpet player had a number one album on the pop charts? Uh, hmm. What years were those again? 65, 66, 67, and 68. Hmm, that should be. Oh, wow. There's a couple guys out there, uh. Say Herb Albert. He's got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. You have won a certificate also. Hey, thanks. Son of a gun. Boy, and we're going to have to... And the Tijuana Brass. And the Tijuana Brass. Yeah, we're going to have to keep that uh, that reproduction machine, whatever you call it, <laughs> copying machine going full black. Get out a ream of paper. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's get more paper. More more cheap copy paper. And get them, get them reamed out. Okay. <laughs> Come on, people. I got qu Christmas questions. Come on. Ask me some Christmas questions. Okay. <laughs> Car feeling is, maybe Carlene has a, was, would like to get that category. She's in Pennsylvania. Hi, Carlene. Hi. Hi, Carlene. Okay. Hi. What? Um, I want to try the musical theater one. Oh, the the theater? Yeah. Okay. You want to you try one we've already given out? Yeah. The one, um, the two musicals yes, that were played. I, yes. Um, Sunset Boulevard. Yes. And Kiss of the Spider Woman. Yes, that's 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 another one. And and actually there are four of I, them and all I don't know what the other two are. Well I'll tell you what the Beauty other two are. Beauty and the Beast. Uh yes, Beauty and the Beast is one. And also Vic, Victor Victoria. Victor Victoria. That's the one with the with Julie Andrews right. that's been made into a Broadway show that's playing in Broadway right now. Okay. Okay, so you you have passed that test. Now give uh, give us a question on okay, this. Okay, this comedy. one is also movie to musical, back and forth. Okay, okay. there were two um, 1980s, 1990s era, very famous musical theater stars who were in the movie Hello, Dolly. And they played supporting characters. Say the first part of that again. Okay. These two men, I'll give you that much, are very, very famous in the world of musical theater yeah. performing. And they were supporting characters in the movie Hello, Dolly! with Barbara Streisand. Oh, say, they both were in the same movie. They were the both in the same Street. movie. Okay. Boy, you know something? I don't think I ever saw that version. I've seen Carol Channing a few times. Uh, does do any of you guys know that? The, the two and, they both, and they're very famous now, still performing? Yes, they are. How long has Mandy Patinkin and been? Michael Crawford? I don't know. Hmm. We don't know. Jeez, no one will you? <laughs> it kind of goes right through you, doesn't it? It does. I, I, I really, I, none of us obviously. You had one of them. Which was? With Michael Crawford. Hey, that was mine. Oh, he man. played Cornelius Hackle and couldn't sing a note. Oh, Is that right? And who was the other and one? And the other one was Tommy Toon. Oh, oh Tommy Toon. Okay, okay. Good. These people got some good great questions, questions tonight. Yeah. yeah, that's an excellent question. You ever see Tommy Toon dance? I always thought he was going to fall over. He's fabulous. He's, I come up to his waist. 
No, he's he's very he's very tall. He's six foot six. Yeah, and and to me he's kind of clumsy when he dances. Do you you apparently don't 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 feel that way, and nobody else probably does either. I don't think I've ever seen him dance. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he did. He dances and does the choreography right. and everything. Well, in, he's in not television. as well built as you are, Norm. You're six, <laughs> you're six foot six also, but you, you know you've who, got the muscle. Who there. is well more yeah. But Temkin probably comes the closest to my build. Very sturdy, big arms, mm -hmm. muscle, muscular. Well, well rounded came to mind. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, well rounded is very good too. Okay, let me give you a musical comedy uh, question then. Okay. Okay. Um, here's another. Here's a sh show that's also on on Broadway right now. The Oscar oh, yeah. Hammerstein Jerome Kern musical, based on a book by Edna, Edna Ferber. The author again. Uh, Ed, Edna Ferber. The musical author? Uh, the, the name of the musical written by Oscar Hammerstein and Jerome Kern, and it's on Broadway right now, as a matter of fact, and uh, Edna Ferber wrote the book upon which it was based. I want to guess Showboat? Showboat is correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it is correct. Very good. good. Write a paper. <laughs> okay, good. Hang in there, and you get a certificate of award, too, Frida. Okay. Uh, Irene in Ohio. Where in Ohio are you, Irene? In Dayton. Dayton, okay. Mm -hmm. what, what category would you like? Uh, do you have a movie category? No, we do not. You're just only pertaining to music from movies or something like that. Oh, okay, because I just tuned in a while ago. Yeah, no, the, the categories are rock and roll, big band, uh, jazz, musical comedy, and Christmas music. Oh, okay. I'll try musical comedy then. Musical comedy it will be. We had one question that was out. I don't know if you'd like to... No, I guess we just had the answer to that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of... Oh, you mean the Glenn Miller? Yeah, no, no. That, that, oh, no, uh, no, no, Jimmy... no, 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 no. Hold on. That was something else. Oh. Who, was the, who was the man noted for his ornate, ornately stayed, uh, staged dance numbers? He choreographed the big shows like a 42nd Street Gold Diggers of 1935, Footlight Parade, those kind of shows. And his name has become synonymous with these big dance numbers, the big choreographical things. Who, who are you talking about? Oh, God. Is he still alive? I don't believe so. Oh, I'll, shoot. I'll, 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 when, when, when the 1 o'clock news comes on, I'll check the men's room. <laughs> See what he, sometimes he hides out there. No, you. I'm, uh, I'm sure you'd know the name. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, he he's sort of balding. Well, he was. Well, he he probably. He's really bald now. Yeah, he's probably. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He's, man. As, he's probably about as bald as you can get. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm awfully sorry. We can. Uh, what we will do is we'll just keep that out in case anybody else wants to. And I know as soon as you hear the answer, you'll say, "Oh gosh darn golly cheekers." Yeah, right, right. Okay, thanks for calling, Irene. Okay. Bye bye now, and let's go to uh, Paul in uh, Foxborough. Hi, Paul. You're on WBZ. Hi. How you doing? Good. Thanks. Um, did anybody answer that McCartney question? What is Paul McCartney's first name? Uh, that is James. James Paul McCarthy. McCartney. Mm -hmm. You are correct. Okay. Do you have another question for us? Okay. Um, back in the late '60s, early '70s, there was a group, Jeff Hotel. Mm -hmm. They had two guitars. One was Mick Abrahams. The other was Martin Barry. There was a third, and he played for a very short period of time, and then went on to another band. Who is it? Hmm. What band did he go on to? Too much of a hint? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> that bus is going to work out. Yeah. Okay, Who, what's the answer? His name is Tony Iommi. Uh, oh. Black Sabbath. Uh, yeah. oh, no yeah. kidding. Just don't tell Wow. Okay, one final question then for you for the certificate. Okay. On the Sgt. Pepper's cover, I'm going, to, I'm going to name a few people. Tell me the one person that I name that is not on the cover. I'll name a few. Okay. Marilyn Monroe, Edgar Allan Poe, Bob Dylan, Steve Lawrence, Elvis Presley, Fred Astaire. Uh, W.C. Field. <laughs> All right. The bus driver's name is Al. <laughs> right. No, let's. Of, of the people that I named, oh, I hate to rewind I'm sorry. the question. Okay. He was also on there. Yeah, I mean, you're you're in the right ballpark. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul. 
that was a great we'll line. Have, we'll, have to, we'll have to call it. We have news coming up in about a minute. To moderate volume just about everywhere. 128, 495. The Mass Pike all doing well. Downtown area we're doing just so nicely. Expressway northbound and southbound. Lower Deck of Route 93. Tobin Bridge heading into the city. No major problems reported. We can expect a little bit of a lighter uh, morning commute a little bit later on today. As many people still have the day off to recover from the holiday. I'm Jack Hart, WBZ 24-Hour Traffic Network. Oscos wants you to know about your medicine's usage, how to take it, and possible side effects, so you get a detailed printout with each prescription at all 44 Boston-area Oscos. Including uh, Ed Mullen, who is uh, obviously one of our stalwarts here. Ta-da! Very good, and we also have Tony Nesbitt. Ta-da! <laughs> I wonder how Jack Hart is going to respond. And we have Jack Hart. Yeah, da, da, da. Excellent, excellent. And we have Mike Epstein, who's our producer. And that's right. We, have, uh, we also have the lovely Marilyn Gorelnik, who's keeping score. And uh, you can win a certificate of award if you stump us, and we don't stump you, and all of that. And the categories, as you know, rock and roll, big band, uh, jazz. Not big band jazz, but big band comma and jazz in either category. And musical comedy. And a new one tonight would be Christmas music. I'm trying to work more of the Christmas music into the rock or the big band. I'm looking through some of my questions because I want people to ask Christmas questions. No, and I would like them to ask some jazz things, too. We haven't had much of that either. And I happen to have right in my hand here. Tons. <laughs> do you hear that? They have tons of them. Okay. Uh, 254 1030, area code 617. The best bet, because the lines do jam up very, very quickly, the best bet is to, when you hear somebody about ready to hang up, just hit the redial button, and I hope you get through. And we'll move it along as quick as we can to get as many people on as possible, like Dave and Lemonster's with us. Hi, Dave. Bum, ba, da, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> okay, what would you like, Dave? Well, uh, if I could, I'd like to give a very subtle clue to help people out on that Christmas question. The author of I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day graduated from Brogan College, and his name appears with a classmate who is also a writer on the college library. Okay, do you want to use that as your opening question for, for the Christmas category? No, or? actually, I want to answer the musicals. Okay, let's do the musicals then. Sure, we'll, get my hopes up. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was going to ask you what year he graduated, but that would uh, be possibly unfair. The okay, okay, do you want jazz? Choreographer. Okay, you want jazz or big band or which category? Not musicals. You? Oh, I'm sorry. You said you did yes. say musical. The right? choreographer who did all those big splashy things was Busby Berkeley. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay, now what question do you have for us? Um, well, I'll get a bit of Christmas into musicals. The subject of the Christmas song in the musical, which was recently revived on Broadway, She Loves Me. Yeah, and there was a Christmas song in there it. There was a Christmas song in it, and it. I'm more interested in the subject. And the subject of the Christmas song. Could right. the subject be Christmas? <laughs> I don't have any, I don't even know what you're talking about. If the truth were to be known today. The, the Christmas. Yeah. She loves me. Chestnuts, yeah. the Christmas song? No, no, not the Christmas. There is a song about Christmas. In, in the She Loves Me. In the musical She Loves Me. Yeah. It's mm. a comic number done by the whole cast, chorus type song, and it deals with a specific subject mm. around about uh, Christmas. I think we'll get rid of that quickly. No, I have no. I have no, we, none of us really know the answer to that. What is the song? It the song. It's uh, the, about shopping. It's twelve days to Christmas, and uh, these people were organized and had their names printed on their cards in August, and then it gets down to one day to Christmas, and panic takes over. Oh, I see. That's and it's basically the cast like running in and out of the shop doing the yeah. shopping. Sort of a spinoff on the the partridge and the pear tree. Right. Hmm. Okay. Uh, here's here's a question, and then I'll offer you this the final one, and if you get this one. Naturally, you win one of our uh, swell certificates. Uh, Noel Coward, in one of his songs, wrote, "The birds do it, bees do it, even educated fleas do it." What is what is it exactly that they do? And what's your language, Dave? Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Let's fall in love is absolutely correctly and uh, correct. And uh, you win a gift certificate. Not a gift. I keep saying that. Well, it is kind of a gift certificate. If a you wonderful will. certificate, misspelled, just like the Boo Brawley pen. That's right. Would be, would just like what? Well, Bob Riley had an extra O put on the oh, his that's, name. Oh, the that's pen. right, on the pen. That's true. Okay, thank you. Hang in there, Dave, and we'll go to Victor. He had to ruin it, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go to, I don't know what you mean by that, but yes, I do. Uh, Victor in uh, Winthrop. Hi, Victor, you're on WBZ. Hi, how you doing? Hey, we're doing so so far. I was kind of hoping you'd give us an appraisal. Rather than ask us how we're doing, I thought you'd say, hey, I'm listening to you guys. You're going, you're going great. What, what, what's your category? Uh, I'll take rock and roll. 
Okay, rock and roll. Okay, here's, okay. A, here's a song for you. Mm -hmm. Name any song you can think of that mention the Beatles directly or indirectly. That's a tough one. Mm. Yeah, the Beatles. I got one. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Very indirectly. Uh, there's a song by Robin Hitchcock called Beatle Number One. Are you familiar with that? No, but if uh, no, but it sounds sounds like you know. No, you got me totally. You know, I never heard of that one. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So we're gonna, all right, we're gonna take your word for it, Victor, because we find people who call here are totally honest and wonderful. Yeah, have you ever heard? <laughs> of what were the two you had it? Have you ever heard of? Uh, Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians. And the Egyptians, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Hit us with it. We'll hit you with a question now, uh, Victor. Um, oh, you a, hit us with a question. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I have a. Um, I, I want you kind of to indulge me on this one because um, it does involve rock and roll, but it does kind of involve uh, a movie. Is that okay? Go ahead. Sure. Okay. There was a um, particular individual who had a very boppy hit song in 1982. And this individual was in Easy Rider. Can you so name the person? It wasn't Peter Fonda, was it? Oh, no. <laughs> was he in Easy Rider? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Along with Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper also was in it, yeah. It's not a big part. Okay. In 1982? Mm-hmm. Well, well Rick, song. Rick Springfield was, a, um, was an actor before, he, and that was around that time. Nope. Mm. Uh, Tony Basil. Was. That's right. Oh, it, Tony Basil. No kidding. Yes. Oh, geez, that was really good, except we the buzzer went off. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't, yeah, you had to jump in, Norm, with yeah. the responder and blow it for us, no, sure. It, it, that is correct. Did you, did you know that, or did you guess that? No, I, I had a feeling when you said Boppy's song in 82, I'm thinking it's got to be Tony Basil yeah, with uh, Mickey, right? Okay, uh, 1972, what classic song starts out with the line, They're smiling in your face. Smiling They're smiling in, in your face. They're smiling in your face? I don't know. They want to take your place? I don't know. It's a little before my time. And you look like... I was, yeah. I was really young. Can you give me another hint? <laughs> oh, I'm so uh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Here's your hint. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, it was the buzz The group was called the buzzers. Anyway, I'm sorry that you missed that, but... Uh, uh, that's another question that anybody who wants to use that as their entry question may certainly may do that. I may have a big band jazz Christmas type song. I don't know. Okay, if you do. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm looking at the names on this. <laughs> okay, you suddenly like, get terribly busy, Tony, out there. Okay, this is Linda in Quincy. Hi, Linda. Hi, Norm. How are you? Good, thank you. What category would you like? Uh, musical comedy. Musical comedy. Okay, musical comedy, you betcha. Who played King Arthur in the original stage version? of Camelot. Wonder what the king is doing tonight. Saying that a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, he was he was King Arthur, the original version. Played Boston, I saw that, saw the show. And he was a delight. I love the way you say his name too, Norm. <laughs> I, actually, I think, uh, I, I have a feeling that... Uh, no, actually, he's, he's doing it now. He's playing the king. He's playing the king right now? That would be the, in the new production of doesn't he play the king now? But he, someone else played it. Oh no, I know who you're thinking of. No, he he played uh, the, the guy you're thinking of played uh, uh, Sir Lancelot in the original and is now playing the it's king. Now playing the king. But I'm talking okay. about the king in the original Batman, version. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The the one who's playing it now is the one who says, uh, uh, "If ever I should leave you." <laughs> You know, with a big, big voice. But that's not who I'm talking about. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll do a medley a little bit later on. Okay. Can you, can I, don't, you, I, I don't think this is right. Is it Robert Goulet? No, that's who, that's who we're kidding about. He does play it now. Now, Richard Burt was in the original version. Julie Andrews was in it as uh, Guinevere. Hmm. And uh, as Lancelot was Robert Goulet. They were in the original version. Who was it again, Norm? Robert Goulet! <laughs> that hurt my throat. <laughs> okay, that's anyway. That's who it was, Linda. And it is true that, uh, uh, of course, Richard Burton is gone, but uh, Robert Goulet now plays the king, and then the revival of the show that's gone now. Okay. Well, do you want to take my question just for? I, I think the best bet is to move along, even though I'd love to know what you think. Save it for is. the next time. All right. Yeah, do it, do it the next time, and thank you very much, Linda. And we'll go to Louis and Lunenburg, which oh. is kind of nice alliteration. 
I, I, I think know. I said that the last time you were on. I said Louis from Lunenburg is nice. What what categories okay. you like, Louis? Well, first of all, can I answer the question about the Sergeant Pepper um, cover? Okay, let me just find the page. Do you have another name to add to the list? <laughs> I know. I named about six people. You're right. Six Is people. Ronald Reagan on there? <laughs> Ringo <laughs> Starr. Name the, name the person not on the cover. Yep. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, Edgar Allan Poe, Bob Dylan, Steve Lawrence, Elvis Presley, Fred Astaire. Oh, that has to be it. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan was not on there, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, he was fairly, really he, he, sorry. Was, he was on there. He was on there. He yeah. was? He yeah. 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 Oh, we feel. I'm really sorry. We, Waldo. Uh, Waldo wasn't Waldo. on there. <laughs> yeah, we're all sorry. We're so sorry, Louie. Oh, and if you want to be sorry, let's all just sit here and be sorry. <laughs> anyway, let's go to uh, Dave in Connecticut. Hi, Dave. Hi. Uh, how about a, a big band question? Big band question. Can I try a big band Chris? Well, I don't know. Oh, you, you want to do the big band show? Go ask your question. Let's see. Well, maybe. Would Bing Crosby qualify? Well, that's not big band. How about the Andrews Sisters? No, no, we're talking big band. Uh, talking well, I figured they sang with you know some of the bands like the Andrews Sisters. Yeah, yeah, but we're talking we're talking mostly like the bands themselves. Let's do it. Okay. Well, I, I, well, okay, well, I was I was going to ask a, uh, when, when I did mine. I was going to ask a singer's question, but a singer that did sing with a big band. Sang. All right, go ask your question, Tony. Then we you might sure? Go, sure go ahead. Okay, Bing Crosby and the Andrews Sisters recorded what Hawaiian song in 1950? Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, Mele Kaliki Mata. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> uh, oh, I love those Hawaiian songs. Oh, oh. That's a great record. You know, there's a, a guy that plays it on the Trinity College Station every Christmas time. Uh, in Hartford. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful answer. And I knew, I I knew you'd love, like that question, I Arthur. Do, I do love that. I love also beautiful Hawaiian hands. I love that. One of my favorites. Oh, she's got you, mean, you mean lovely hula hands? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ask us your question if you would now, Dave. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, this man uh, made records with Kay Kaiser, Charlie Barnett, Jimmy Dorsey, Henry King and the Glen Miller Army Air Force Band. Who did you say, Henry who? Henry King. It was a sweet band. Oh, Henry King. And this guy made records with all of them. All those bands. You, you're suggesting he was a vocal. He's a vocalist. Well, he, 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 he sang. I'm not sure how long. You know, if he toured with all of them, but he, he did at least one record with, all with of each those. of those bands. Yeah. The only one I can think of, and I I don't remember him ever singing with anybody but Kay Kaiser. Was Harry Babbitt? No, oh, that's not who I had. In my, no, the, the singer's name was Bob Carroll. Bob who? Carroll. T A R A. C A. I, I think it's C A R O L. But I'm like Bob Carroll, Ted and Alice. Yeah, oh, just, <laughs> that's the guy's name, Bob Carroll. Bob Carroll. Carroll. No, uh, spell it. I, I guess like the woman's name, like Christmas oh, Carroll. Carol. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's what I said, Carroll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he certainly was well enough known for me to have guessed that. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let me let me uh, ask you this one then too. I'll give you nicknames, All right. and uh, you tell me who we're talking about. Mr. B, Bill Eckstein. Yep, Sassy, Sarah Vaughn, and Mr. Five by Five, Jimmy Rushing. Ex ex exactly very right. Very very good. So you win a uh, certificate of award. Oh, of merit or whatever you call it. <laughs> Thank you very thanks very much, Dave. Hang in there and. Uh, uh, Boy, that's going to go broken. Pictures. Westinghouse postage. That's on right. Monday. That's right too, and all their all their cheap copy paper. Yeah. Because we're going to use that. Uh, the morning crew will get in, and they won't be able to find any paper left <laughs> in the machine. Okay, Todd in uh, North Attleboro. Hi, Todd. Hi. How you doing tonight? We're doing fine. What category would you like? Well, I think I can answer the one about the smile in your face. In 1972, what song starts out there, smiling in your face? Backstabbers. The Backstabbers by the OJs. Correct. Okay. Do you have a question for us? Okay. Um, name my late 70s, early 80s, a female rock star uh, who made a transition to TV, to television. Green Say it again. I'm sorry. Uh, late 70s, early 80s, female rock star who made a transition to television. Oh. Cindy Lauper? No. No. Um, She's been guesting on Matt about you. That's what. No. Was it? Uh, was it Marky Post? No. Who, who, who are you talking about then? Ellen Foley. 
on Ellen Foley. She sang originally with Meatloaf, Meatloaf. and uh, did some, some solo work and then started out on Night Court. Who is, is Marky Post the one on the... Uh... She's on Night Court as well, as a matter of fact. Oh, Marky Post is on Night Court. She's that pretty lady with the great legs. Oh, right. yeah. The original, the original what? female What's... lead was um, Ellen Foley. Okay. The original female lead on Night Court was... On Night Court was Ellen Foley. Oh, yeah. Short okay. blonde hair, looked kind of like Liza Minnelli a little bit. Okay, so here's, a, here's your final question okay. for the certificate. Uh, the question is this. In 1974, Roberta Joan Anderson, put that in quotation marks, talked about the star-making machinery. What song and who is Roberta Joan Anderson better known as? Hmm. 1974. Oh, Joni Mitchell. Right, and the song was? Uh, Free, Free Man in Paris. Exactly. Hey, you win. Oh, great. Very, very good. You want a certificate? We're giving away tons of these things now, isn't it? I know. Because we started out with, uh, you know, with hardly, hardly anybody winning at all. Somebody ask a Christmas them. question, please. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's take a break, and then we'll be back, and uh, we'll just visit. Quiz, and we got a, a, you know, our stellar cast, including... Uh, Tony Nesbitt, hello, Tony again. Nice, nice of you to insert some programming between the commercials. Well, I, I oh my, I, we get a lot of requests, you know, for these commercials, and a lot of people say, get get the, your programming out of the way so we can hear the commercials. That's what happened. Okay. Yeah, Jack is one of those who's enthusiastic. My about eyes have glazed now. over. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and of course we have Jack and Jack Hart, and we have uh, Ed uh -huh. Mullen, and. And I guess we'll get right into it because you know uh, what I haven't heard in a while. Speaking of commercials, yeah, Gold Bond or Ovaltine. That's true. Oh, right. that's true. I feel so good. Yeah, I don't know. We probably probably sold them out of everything. They're probably putting together the Christmas versions. Yeah. Hey, here's <laughs> Dieter. Is it? Is that your name, Dieter? That's right. Okay, and you're in, you're in uh, Maryland, and I'd uh, love to have you. Uh, nice to have you aboard. What what category would you like, Dieter? Uh, I want to try the uh, Sergeant Pepper's cover question. All right. Um, get to that question. Run through the names for me again. Sure. Uh, one of these people I'm going to name is not on the cover of Sgt. Pepper's. Marilyn Monroe, Edgar Allan Poe, Bob Dylan, Steve Lawrence, Elvis Presley, Fred Astaire. Steve Lawrence. He's on there. You would, no, no, wait a minute. Wait you, a minute. you wouldn't expect he would be on Wait, wait a minute. Uh, Steve Lawrence and Elvis Presley, neither one are on the cover. I have the cover here, and there's a list of the 87 people on the cover. Okay. Well, Elvis is the is the correct answer. Elvis is the correct answer. He's not on the cover. Steve Lawrence is on the cover. Uh, he's about, uh, well, uh, let's see. Above the, the beetle that's on the, uh, on the left and probably up about two inches. You could see his face. Uh, I don't know. Well, I have the list here, and I don't see his name on there. I went through it a couple of times. Okay. Because first I pulled out the CD, and I was looking at the cover, and I couldn't make out the face. They're so small. <laughs> it's so small on the CD. And then I found there's a list of them. I went through there, and there's no uh, Steve Lawrence. Well, so what do you think? Maybe they Ed? missed them, too, because the CD cover's so small. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe it's just a dot on the cover. <laughs> well, let's just no, go but to the but, you, but you said you have a, they, they list all of them by name? Yeah, there's 87 of them, and they and the and and the uh, cover lists all of them by name. Yeah. All right, we'll we'll, we'll give you that. Yeah, that's right. We'll give it to them. Okay. I probably won't get the next one. Okay. Yeah. No, no, you ask us you a ask question this time. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to ask you how many people are on the cover. Eighty-seven. You already got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Jim McGuinn, who was uh, the founder of the Birds, he uh, liked hybrids. He uh, pioneered. Uh, electric folk rock, uh, country rock, and the way he came about this was he tuned the uh, his 12-string guitar that pairs the strings an extra, oct an extra octave apart to get the harmonics, and that's what gave him the idea on the vocals for the early bird songs. Uh, what two popular 60s singers was he trying to sound like? Um, let's see. Very popular. Um, let's see, the Everly Brothers did interesting harmonies. No, he was trying to do a hybrid of two popular... Lennon and McCartney. Uh, that's half of it. It was, uh, the, the other one's pretty obvious. Okay, what, what is the one that, uh, that that's correct? Is McCartney? He was, he was trying to sound like, uh, John Lennon and... 
Okay, and we're trying to get the other one now? Yeah. No, we didn't get it anyway. Okay, well, here's one final question for oh, you. Oh, wait a minute. Who's the other one? Yeah, Bob Dylan. Thank you. And if, if, you okay. Listen, okay. if you listen to his early songs, it sounds kind of like uh, John Lennon trying to sound like Bob Dylan. <laughs> okay. Here's, here's a final question for you, Dieter. In the song Born to Run, name the girl that's in the song. Wendy. Wendy's correct. Hey, good. Hang in there. Dieter will send you a swell copy of certificate. Badly spelled with funny <laughs> jokes, or unfunny jokes, as the case may be. Uh, Lisa in New York. Where in New York are you, Lisa? Cortland. Oh, in Cortland, New York. Okay, is that where the apple got its name? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, what category would you like? Uh, 80s rock and roll. 80s rock and roll. Here we go. Uh, what rap group proclaimed themselves the king of rock? What rap group proclaim themselves as the king of rock or the kings of rock? A rap group? Um, gee, I don't know. Run DMC? Right. You got it. <laughs> that was a guess. Wow. That buzzer was just about to go off, too. Good yeah. for you. Do you have a question for us? Okay, I'll try. Um, in the early 80s, it was a rather obscure song. I know because I have the single. I don't know about anybody else that does. And it was about... An evil hairdresser. Can you name the, the title of it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a fair question? An evil hairdresser. Was it a popular song? Or a bad hairdresser. Um, I don't know. I really liked it. I was about 14 at the time, but it wasn't really played very long. But I bought the single. I have the 45. Uh, uh. Let's see. And the, the, I'm sorry. The question is what? What the name of the song? Or the, the name of the song. And it was about an evil hairdresser. Or a bad hair. Or a bad ha hairdresser. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Considering it was the early '80s, I think everyone. Yeah, it was about '84, I think. Uh, uh, uh. It was a triple buzzer because <laughs> yeah. we did so badly on that. Okay, you. What, who? Who are you? Ta what song are you talking about? It's called uh, Modern Day Delilah. Yeah, any of you guys know that? Modern day Delilah? By who? Oh, do I have to? No, no, just curious. I'm not sure. It was a kind of an odd name, and I don't have the single with me, so I, I can't, um, I would look and tell you. Okay, here's one final well, question. Well, you can get the tie in Delilah, of course. He was a one hit wonder. I don't, he never had anything else. Mm. I mean, it was kind of an odd name. Wow. I can't remember. Probably okay, was Samson. Here's, here's one final question uh, now for you then. And this a certificate is writing on this, Lisa. In 1984, Madonna had her first hit. And what was the name of that first hit? Borderline. Um, that was, I think it was her second. Holiday? Holiday was correct, yeah. Good yeah, job. Uh, does, does she win? Because well, I don't believe that was in 84. Was it? Holiday wasn't in... Okay, hold on. We'll give you the stuff, yeah, okay? okay. Yeah, we, don't, we don't need to engage in it. Hold debate. on. We'll give you the yeah, stuff. Yeah, you'll, you'll, take, yeah, you'll get the junkie <laughs> stuff. Here's Glenn, who's in Alaska. You really, you, you, you're you not listening to us in Alaska. Are you from Alaska? Yes. Well, no, I'm from, originally from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Now, yes. where are, you, are you calling from Alaska? Yeah, I'm in Fairbanks, Alaska. Now, how do you know about the program? You can't hear I'm us I'm listening there. to WBZ 1030 on my radio. You can hear us in Alaska? I've been listening to you for years. Now, where, where in Alaska are you? Fairbanks, Alaska. And you can hear us? What do you have, a 900-foot antenna <laughs> on top of your house or something? No, I think it's about 38 foot. No, no, but you but but you do have a big antenna on top of Yeah, your... yeah, I, I'm using a, a converted amateur radio antenna. No kidding. How clearly does it come in? It comes in very clear when you're not being stomped on by that trucker station in Casper, Wyoming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those, those... Darn truckers, geez. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. there is a station in Casper, I guess, that's at 1030, right on the same frequency we are, which is why I'm surprised we, we, we get out to you. Do you have a radio handy? Yes, I do. Could you turn it on and put it next to the uh, microphone so we can hear you? Just to hear what we sound like back there. Oh, there's a slight time delay in your signal. Yeah, no, that's, yeah that's, 10 seconds. No, that's, well, that's, you're not going to hear much of it static, but here goes. Good, good. No, thank you very much. I don't think you could hear much. No, but we, I could hear the 10 seconds. He was talking about wow. the time delay. I could hear that. 
Isn't that incredible? Anyway, what category would you like, Glenn? And I sure hope you win. <laughs> well, you're uh, well. I tell you, your questions are so obscure that I hope you love me a soft one. Uh, I'll try rock and roll since that's the age I grew up in. Okay. Here's a uh, rock and roll question for you. Uh, and it goes something like this. <laughs> <laughs> a one um, and a two. What group's first hit was called Feels Like the First Time? It was Tony whispering, I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, he says that, but he's not going to get us <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, I, I feel so badly. I wanted you Tony, to Tony, Orlando, and Don. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Glenn, but I th thanks very much for calling. It's good to hear from you way out there. Thank you. And good luck to you all. I hope you have a nice, gentle a winter time. And, of course, I hope we do, too. <laughs> uh, Dave in East Cambridge, you're on WBZ. Hi, Dave. Oh, no. What category? Well, uh, I've heard enough about rock and roll. Uh, this is uh, Rick's friend from Middleborough. I mean, Middleton. Um, what uh, what category would you, you want a jazz? Jazz, category? man, straight ahead. Oh, okay. Straight ahead oh. jazz. Oh, that Dave, you're the trumpet player. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay, straight ahead, <laughs> straight ahead jazz. Okay. Oh, he says, uh, Rick says, uh, Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, you're talking about Rick Cassiotis? Yeah, he, I was out there today. He was nice enough to invite me. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let me, let me give you a, we'll give you a jazz question. I, uh, I should okay. be able to get it. I know a little bit about it. No, I know. You, you, I'm sure you'll get it. I'm just trying to find one that's uh, that's worthy of you. <laughs> okay. Well, instruments. I am not worthy. Okay, no, you'll know this one. Instrument. What instrument is played by John Coltrane and Branford Marsalis? Oh, my goodness. Well, actually, they they both play two different instruments, but um, I would say you know tenor sax. Yeah, well, well, John and they Coltr also play soprano sax. Oh yeah, uh, but uh, John Coltrane and Branford Marsalis do both play tenor. Both play tenor, yeah. Tenor sax. Okay, lay one on me there, big okay, guy. Okay, okay, this might be a little more difficult because I want to get that. Uh, what is that? A, a certificate, certificate of award, of, yeah. Uh, merit. Yes. I, I can maybe you know use it as a college degree. Um, <laughs> All right, I got one for you. I was thinking about it on the way home. We were listening. Okay. Yeah, because I think Rick is listening, by the way. Okay. Would you uh, get out with the question, if you would, there? Yeah, I was, uh, you know, about Art Blakey and about when. We'll keep on the subject of the Marcellus. Okay. Uh, the trumpet player before when, you know, when plays Art Blakey. Yeah. Who was the trumpet player before when? Before Wynton Marcellus. The one before. With, with Art Blakey, who's the drummer. The uh, who was the trumpet player before when with Art Blakey? You know. Uh, yeah. uh, no, I understand the question. Yeah. It's 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 pretty clear. I. I, I you want to give I, you a couple of clues? Well, if you want to, you can. Okay. You well, he was from Russia. Oh. He was from Russia. Russia. No, I. What's the other clue? Uh, he was uh, a white musician. He was a white musician. White, one of the white trump players. There were like from Russia. No, I actually, I tell you the truth, I'm going to give myself the buzzer because I, I really don't know the answer. Oh, it's Valerie Palmarov. No, oh, I would have guessed that, man, if you give me 10 more clues. Oh, yeah, well, he, he, was, he was a good player. I actually saw them play in 78. Yeah? Okay, hey, hang in there. We'll turn you over to Mike. Do you have to give him another question? Oh, i got to get another one. Oh, that's right. We've got to give you, okay, the, uh, the drummer who leads the band on uh, Conan O'Brien's late night TV show. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, I haven't watched it lately. Uh, um, he has glasses. Uh, yeah, and he has drumsticks in his hands and glasses uh, on his face. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Get the police sketch out of it. Oh, <laughs> okay. yeah, uh, Weinberg, Max Weinberg. Mike's Weinberg is, is yeah, correct. Yeah, a good band, pretty good band. Yeah, I, I think he's excellent because he was a rock drummer primarily at first. But I think he can play anything. He, he I think, swings I think he's pretty excellent. good, yeah. Yeah. Hey, congratulations. We'll get the junkie thing out to you. Thank you very much. Let's go to Steve in Dedham. Steve, you're on WBZ. Hey, how we doing, everybody? Good, okay. Steve. Okay, what category would you like, Steve? Uh, what do we get for categories besides rock and roll? We have rock and roll. We have big band. We have jazz. We have musical comedy. I have Christmas uh, songs, Christmas music. Christmas music. Okay, hey. All right. Go, go get them, Tony. All right. What did the lamb say to the shepherd boy? Bah. Do you hear what I hear? Yes. Do you hear what Jack, I hear? Jack, you waited all night for that one, Jack. Yes, I did. <laughs> I 
And what's your? Now, what, I have some Christmas rock too. Next time we have a rock question. Okay. What what category uh, that is? What is your question with us in the in the same category? Are you okay, Steve? I think he got frightened. I think you did. <laughs> See, when you call, that's, that's the first. That wasn't very, you know. Uh, you don't just hang up. Why do people do that? Is he stupid? What is he? Let's find out where he lives and go and beat the hell out of him. Do that? <laughs> that wasn't really in the Christmas spirit, now. What? No, it wasn't. No, uh, Lisa. In see, when you're anonymous on the phone, you can you can you can act like a total ass and hang up. And who who knows? Uh, Lisa in Chelsea. Hello. Here to get back to the sheep. Yeah. How you doing, Lisa? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, fine. What category would you like? Well, I was going to do Christmas, but I think I have the answer to the um, feels like the first time. Is it Paulina? That's right. Paulina's first hit single was feels like the first time. Great. Mm. Do you have a question for us now? Um. Okay, Rock. Okay. The uh, former lead singer of Motley Crue. He just had a daughter who recently passed away. Vince Neil. All right. But before she passed away, he wrote a song for her. What was the name of the song? Oh, I just read this. Mm. Oh, it was, uh... <sighs> oh, mm. I, I can't remember. The Little Neil. The Little Neil. No, no, it was because after she died, he wrote oh. the... I can't remember. <laughs> Skyler's song. What was it again? Skyler's. Song. Skyler's song. That's right, Skyler. Yeah, okay. You said you wanted Christmas music. I have a rock Christmas. Okay. All right? Okay. Let me actually, let me thumb through fun and nice. Okay, what carol shares a title with a hit song by the rock group Three Dog Night? Carol Burnett? Uh... <laughs> I like that question. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, okay. I, I'm sorry. My mind was off someplace. I was trying to spit out the Jack Hart's bad joke. Did she lose? Yeah. Yes. Okay. In fact, she hung up. She hung up, too. Okay. <laughs> uh, Brian in Boston. Hi, Brian. You're Hi, Norm. Boston. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Pleasure to talk to you. What category would you like? Well, I want to know if you saw your cousin Jose Smith when he was in town uh, in October. No. I haven't seen Jose Smith for a thousand years. <laughs> I really have not. Okay. So this, this is Joe Smith. Used to be a disc jockey. Then he he, he got to be what is he? Capital. He's Cap president of Capital Records. Capital that Records. keeps putting on those commercials uh, yeah, for right. the Beatles. Okay. What what category would you like uh, right now, Brian? Rock and roll. Okay. Okay. Brian. I have another rock Christmas song. Go ahead. May I? Go ahead. I just feel so slighted. Okay. What rock hit was recorded by Bobby Helms in 1957? Jingle Bell Rock. Very good. Okay, what cat? What what question do you have for us? Um, who recorded "Lay a Little Lovin' on Me"? Huh? Say that again. "Lay a Little Lovin' on Me." Oh, "Lay a Little Lovin' on Me." Who mm -hmm. recorded that? I'll Would give you a hint. No. It's from 1970. Oh, well, that's a good hint. Okay, yeah, we've got 12 months and 365 the words, days. Yeah, and the words are in English. <laughs> but that'll help you at all. And it was sung by somebody who opened their mouth when they sang it. Into a microphone. Okay, do you guys know? Anybody know that? Lay a little of it on me. Um, no. Uh, okay. It was recorded by Robin McNamara. He was in the original cast of Here. Oh, that's a good question. That probably nobody in the entire universe would know the answer except Robin McNamara. Okay, here's a final question for you. All right. If you get this one, Brian, you get a certificate of award, and I hope you'll show it to my cousin Joe Smith. Next time I see him. Okay. Tony, you want, you want one, Tony? You got some extra questions there? Uh, 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 rocks. Uh, uh, no, go ahead. Okay. What, what group asked the question, why can't we be friends? Why can't? In the 70s. Yeah. Why can't we be friends? Oh. Why can't we, we be friends? Yep, you got it. War. War is correct. Hey, Great. Very good, Brian. Thanks very for your help. Hey, you, you win a certificate of uh, merit and award and music and all kinds of stuff. And thank you very much. And we'll uh, just take a little break here for a couple more commercials. Well, music was, as a matter of fact, as it's known in, in, in uh, Alaska, in legend in, in Alaska and all over the place. Okay, let's go to uh, Jim in New York. Hi, Jim. Hi, how are you doing tonight? Hey, we're doing pretty good. What, what category would you like, Jim? Well, let's go with the rock and roll tonight. I'll okay, have no, some more, Ed, if you... Go ahead. Tell all me. right. Go ahead. Uh, let's well, let me just ask Jim, where in New York are you, Jim? 
Uh, I'm in Ithaca, home of Cornell University. Oh, sure, sure. One of the great Ivy League schools. Yeah, we're, we're proud of it. Are you are you a student there? No. Nope. No, I deliver pizza to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll keep it coming. Okay. Yep, okay. Okay. okay, here's your question from uh, Tony. All right. After rocking around the Christmas tree, what kind of pie will we have? Rocking around the Christmas tree, let's have a piece of pie. <laughs> and here's the kind of pie I'd like. It's good for you and I. <laughs> uh, apple? No. Ooh, okay. Uh, oh, Thanks anyway. Okay, we'll just have that, keep that hang in there in case anybody else wants to use that as their entry question. And I appreciate talking to you, Jim, from Ithaca, New York. Uh, Mary in Peabody. Hi, Mary. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, <laughs> what category would you like? Actually, he asked a Christmas question before. Okay. Which, which I don't know if someone answered it. Okay, we've got. It's Carol King, right? Mm, what? Well, no. Oh, about what? Uh, no. If I'm wrong, it doesn't count. Then I get to pick any a new. Uh, <laughs> that there was no there was no no answer or anything that had to do with Carol King. Okay. Okay, then forget it. See, I was, I was just okay. That's fine. So I go into the eighties. Okay, you want a, you want a question then on rock and roll. Is that right? Um, or, or some do you other? have 80s rock, did you say? Or? Yeah, here's, a, here's one for you. Do you want, we'll, want, to, do you I want, want a Christmas a good one? one. Uh, I, I don't know. This might be the 80s. Nah, go ahead, Ed. I'm not sure about uh, the okay. data. Okay, I mean, nothing too, um, nothing oh, Okay, way. REO Speedwagon had a big hit album in the early 80s. Oh, High Infidelity. And it was called High Infidelity. She got it. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Ask us something, if you would now, uh, Mary, please. Okay, um... This is actually video. I don't know if I can do that one. Can I do that one? Go ahead. Okay, the group Rat had a hit song called Round and Round. Mm -hmm. And in their video, they had a guest appearance by a very famous comedian. Who was it? I know this one. I can't think of oh, his name. Oh, wait a second. I think, um, was, it, uh, was it Milton Berle? Thank yes, you. it was. Okay. Excellent. It was. Excellent. I'm going, Berle, Berle. I'm <laughs> inviting the first. He's the grandfather of one of the band members, I believe. Or an uncle. Or a yeah. great uncle or something. That's, that's an interesting question. Very nice. And uh, very good, uh, Jack. Right, right there. Hey, thank you, Mary. I'm sorry you didn't win, but that was a good question. Oh, thanks. She's going to be so pleased she said I didn't win, but he said it was a good question. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Sarah. Who is it? Where Where in Maine are you, Sarah? I'm in York, Maine. Oh, York, Maine. Okay. Yep. Just up the rod from here, you know. Just, just a bit. I go to school in Brunswick, though. Okay. <laughs> uh, Brunswick is what? Is that Colby? Bowden. Not Bowden. Colby. I'm sorry. Bo Bowden. What is, is wrong right. with you, Norm? I'm sorry. That's really dumb. Bowden. That's right. <laughs> that's Carl D'Souza's uh, home uh, school. He went to Bowden also. What category would you like to Sarah? Uh, rock music, please. Rock music, please. I have one. Okay. What a bossy rock superstar recorded Santa Claus is Coming to Town? Uh, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, wasn't that a tough one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got a question for you along that line. Ah. So, um, well, actually, never mind. You already know it if I answer that. But what, <laughs> your Max Weinberg question, I was going to ask you what band he was oh, in before. Oh, the but, band, yeah. But, okay, oh. This one I'm not too sure of if it's correct or not, but who auditioned to be lead singer of Led Zeppelin prior to Robert Plant? Uh, what's the question? Was it the was the question the, the band that that no Max no that had? that was one she was going to ask but she didn't. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, but, the, but the real question is, to say it again, please. The real question is, who auditioned to be lead singer of Led Zeppelin prior to Robert Plant? Rod Stewart. Yes. Huh. Okay. Ooh. Good. Good. Good for you. Ed Mullen. Good for you, Ed. And Sarah, nice to talk with you. Nice talking to you, too. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, let's go to Don in uh, Bill Ricca. Hi, Don. You're on Hello. WBC. Hi. I want to answer the question about Joy to the World. What carol shares a title with a hit song by the rock group Three Dog Night? Joy to the World. Very good. Hmm, okay. I want to ask a question. The group The Monkeys, one of the monkeys out of uh, four original was an actor... And what program was he in when he was a child? Oh, uh, one of the monkeys? One that, of the monkeys. That was uh, Mickey Dolan's, and he was Circus Boy. Right. <laughs> circus Boy. A lot of people don't remember that one, I right? don't remember it. Jack, what is that, Circus Boy? Circus Boy. Well, I, I, I'm guessing that he had, Joel like, Barry a circus Jr. at his disposal. Uncle. That was your nickname, Jack, wasn't it? Circus Boy, yeah, that was me. <laughs> 
Yeah, I used to play uh, everybody in the sideshow. Norberry Jr. Okay, hey, thank you. We're gonna we're gonna just move along because we can get one more okay. one yep. more person on, oh, on with it's us all before over. We, it's almost all over. You know, it's it's about three of two, so we'll we'll take one more call, and then we have to move along. But if anybody would like to play the dumb birthday game, we'll be doing that right after three, which is only an hour from now, and you can call the same phone number two five four ten thirty for that. Let's go to Bob. You're the uh, you bring up the rear line there or something like that, Bob. What category would you like? Uh, I'll take that Christmas one about, uh, it was a Brenda Lee song about pumpkin pie. That's right. After rocking around the Christmas tree, what kind of pie will we have? Pumpkin pie. Right. Very good. And your question. Uh, okay. In, um, I think it was 1953 or 54, the movie The Lemon Drop Kid, what Christmas song made its debut in that movie? Hmm. And, uh, I'm not going to tell, I'll, I'll give you a hint if you don't know, um, who starred in it, but. Bob Hope? Right. Yeah, Bob Hope did, yeah. That's right, Marilyn Maxwell. Okay, was it was it uh, the Christmas song, the Mel Torme Christmas song? No. I guess I blew it then. What yeah. was the, what's the answer? The silver Bells. Okay, oh. Silver Bells. So that means we have one final question for you. And and what what is what what is that question? Is that your from you, Tony? Yes it is. Okay. Okay. And uh the chipmunk song. What does Alvin want for Christmas? Um Tony, was that the answer, too, to that thing you said, 1958, the Emmy? Yes, it was. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, what was your question again? Uh, in, in that song, the Chipmunk song, what did Alvin want for Christmas? Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Hey, thank you very much. I'm going to have to say goodbye quickly to all you guys. You want the answers, though? To oh, okay. Uh, Do that after. Yeah, why don't we do that after 2 o'clock? Okay. Everybody hang around. Tony, who's uh, still on the line. Right and, here. Okay, and uh, Jack. Yeah. And, of course, Ed Mullen. Right And here. what questions did we not uh, get to and where we can supply the answers right now so people will, will know? Incidentally, if you want to give me a call anyway uh, for a couple of reasons. One is just to talk and say hello. I love to talk with you and find out how the day went or whatever else you'd like to talk about. Uh, 617-254-1030. Plus, we'll be playing the dumb birthday game in an hour. And if you'd like to be part of that, call Mike Epstein at that very same number and uh, and put yourself in line for that. That'd be kind of nice, too. We have chunky prizes for that also. More chunky prizes, actually. We we got a, I tell you, I got a warehouse of junk stuff. And I cannot wait to get rid of it. And it's called your home. It is called my home. It's the only house in Middleton, Massachusetts, you need a front-end loader to get across the kitchen into the dining room. And well, you have to wipe your feet before you go outside. That's right. Otherwise, you mess up the garage. <laughs> two, five, four, ten, thirty. Area code six one seven. You give us a call. Anyway, what 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 did we not get to? Did you have some Tony out yes, there? Yes, I have three. Okay. All right. Um, I heard the bells on Christmas Day was based on a poem written during what American War? Anybody? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Is no. The Longfellow wrote that. So that was the Revolutionary War? No. Uh, the uh, American, uh, oh, the War of 1812? No. <laughs> was it the Russo-Japanese War? <laughs> no. The or the Durango? Was it, wasn't the uh, Cuban, uh, the, uh, the uh, little journey into Cuba? No, it wasn't the, War of the, the Worlds either. Oh, the Spanish-American War? No. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, what, 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 what wars did we leave out? That we had the Civil War? Yes, there you go. <laughs> oh, it was the Civil War. That's the one you left out. I know, that seems so obvious. I guess nobody nobody wanted to use that. All right. Okay. Question number two, which the one of the guys was just guessing towards the end there. What novelty song squeaked by with a Grammy in 1958, and it was the Chipmunk song? Squeaked uh, by. Can you uh, believe that won a Grammy? I'm shocked. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. Well, that was Spike Jones oh, those, and yeah. the, and a little kid who said, "All I want for if, so, so I can wait, wish so you I Merry Christmas." Say, yeah, he lisped. He, he needed the anyway. fifth and by the fifth, whatever. Yeah. Is that yeah. Jimmy Boyd? That was Jimmy Boyd. Yes, I believe that was Jimmy. It was not uh, Spike Jones. It was Jimmy Boyd. You're right. And what is what was the third one? Tony? And the third one was, "What does Alvin want for Christmas?" Alvin is not not Alvin. 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 Alvin, one of the chipmunks. Oh, one of the chipmunks. for Christmas. A hula hoop. Yes. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, boy, that, Did you that, just that, sing that and get to the line, Ed? It, no, I, <laughs> I love the chipmunks. Oh. Even want a hula hoop. <laughs> I want to ask, before we get to, to the answers to your questions, uh, Ed, uh, I want to ask uh, 
Jack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is this is the busiest shopping day of the season coming up. Is it not Friday the Friday the day after Thanksgiving? That is correct. Who and created that? Oh, when did it become the busiest shopping? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's because everyone has those big, huge, you know, one hundred percent off sales from seven to ten and from seven to noon. The retailers created it. I, I, oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's who the heck wants to go out after they, Thanksgiving and shop? What they stuff. do is they go through their storehouses and their warehouses and they pull out all the, the uh, you know, all the, the the stuff that they haven't gotten rid of in the last twenty years yeah. and they stick it in there. Look, lots and lots off. <laughs> Yeah, and, and 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 the traffic reports will all be, yes, sir. We're you know we're coming by. I don't know the whether well, the helicopters will be up there. Yes, indeed. Or not. They'll be flying there, and because I will have, be having traffic reports. Oh, that's right. Of course, it's Friday, it's so Friday. it's another yeah. work day. I keep yeah, I keep thinking today is well. Anyway, we, it will be a lighter than normal uh, traffic day, no doubt, in the morning. But around shopping malls, pandemonium. Yeah, oh, that yeah. should be a traffic report. Never mm -hmm. mind the road. Just like what about the parking? No, that's what they. There's, there's a space over by Road D. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. They ought to do that. <laughs> it says uh, yeah. Uh, this year is supposed to be tough for the nation's retailers. Consumers have been miserly shoppers the past few months. They're expected to be more frugal this holiday season than they were a year ago, but they will nonetheless, nonetheless, go to the stores over the long weekend, crowding malls to drop a few billion bucks. Now let's look on the good side. Yes. So they've been miserly the past few months because we're saving up to go nuts at Christmas. Yeah. They don't want to look at it that way. And you know, you know, it takes a young guy like you to look at the overall picture and breathe some I, I, breathe, breathe reason into these troubled moments. <laughs> what do you say? What? <laughs> anyway, so the traffic reports are coming. They're important. As a matter of fact, there may be people jockeying for position in these traffic in the malls right this minute. As a matter of right fact, okay, yeah. right around uh, Braintree, uh, South Shore Plaza in Braintree, there is traffic backed up on Route 37 to Bethuen. <laughs> and when you consider there's a mall in Bethuen itself, that's really kind of silly. Yes, well, the traffic in Bethuen backed up to Route 37 in Braintree. <laughs> and, and Liberty Tree Mall in Danvers is backed up to the North Shore Mall across the road there in Peabody. <laughs> sure, and oh, Chestnut Hill Mall back up to Burlington. They're, mall. they're everywhere there. Yep. Okay, let me let me ask you before he leaves the studio in disgust, <laughs> uh, Ed Mullen, and to find out, uh, get some of the answers to some of your questions. Uh, there's one that was on the board still. Uh, name any song in which the Beatles are mentioned or directly or indirectly. Now, someone came up with a song that I wasn't familiar with. Uh, Did you look that song up? Can you guys think of any? Hmm. I. Oh, oh, uh, I see. oh yeah. No. Mm. <laughs> Me um, how about remember the Dream Academy in the '80s, Life in a Northern Town? Oh yeah. And they mentioned just the Beatles specifically. Okay. Then there's uh, American Pie, where it says the quartet practiced in the parks, and oh, yeah. the marching band refused to yield. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Pepper's ah. marching. Did you look up the answer that he gave to see if you could find? I, no, I, you know what? I don't have uh, that. You don't I, have I don't think book? that was a hit. I don't think that was a hit. So I have that top one hundred. You came in book. without your Bible. <gasps> um, I have one right here. In fact, I looked up at the commercial. I looked up uh, at Delilah. Yeah. Van Stevenson, mid '80s, top forty, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So what the heck? But uh, the last one I have here is uh, Carolina in My Mind, going to Carolina in My Mind by James Taylor. Oh, yeah. Now you know what the connection is there? No. James Taylor was signed to Apple Records, his first album. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. And when he in during the song where he says, "There's a holy host of others standing around me," that's the Beatles in the booth. Um, while he's recording his first song, I think Paul. Hmm. I'm not sure who else, but I, I'm pretty sure Paul played played on that first album also. No kidding. Yeah, and uh, so that it's kind of an interesting start. James Taylor, how does that fit in? But uh, it's because he signed with Apple Records. Hmm. I have one little trivia question that, that you guys uh, can uh, just chew on just for a quick second. <laughs> Beatles. In February February 11th, 1963, the Beatles started to record their first LP. Now, they already had four songs to be included on this album. Uh, for Tony and Jack mm -hmm. and Norm, how many, days, how many days did it take them to record the remaining ten songs? Now... This session included Twist and Shout, I Saw Her Standing There, Do You Want to Know a Secret? 
How many days did it take them to record those ten songs? Hmm. Eight. Eight. And Jack, the basis of the song Eight Days Away. I don't know. Uh, three. Three. The answer is one. <gasps> That's what I was really wow. going to say because those songs are about a minute and a half each. So. That's right. But they work so hard. They work. They crank out these songs. And in one day, they record their whole LP. Their whole. And they could have taken the rest of their life off. No <laughs> That's It's really true. They could have. They, and they also took an hour and a half lunch and an hour and a half dinner. There's a book by uh, Those Mark, bums. Mark Lewison and it, uh, with the actual notes from the recording sessions. Yeah. And they actually took that amount of time off, recorded these take after take after take, and they ended the day with Twist and Shout with John Lennon's voice just shredded. They're screaming out, get up, baby, yeah. Twist and Shout. What, what, what was know. the name of the author who, who uh, wrote the Mark book? Mark Hertzgaard. Yeah, Mark Hertzgaard, we had on the program uh, about a couple of weeks or so ago, who's written a book on the Beatles, similar to what you're talking about, great detail about notes and recording sessions and all that. Great and as a matter of fact, yeah, in fact, the uh, uh, Newsweek magazine had the cover story, and he had a piece in that uh, that article, which was, that was only a couple of weeks ago. I yes. Yeah. Uh, also, I have, uh, I think there's only one question that we didn't get answered on the musical comedy level. And that was the man noted for his ornately staged dance numbers. Uh, he choreographed shows like 42nd Street Gold Diggers of 1935 Footlight Parade. Oh, didn't somebody get that? No, I don't think anybody get, got was that. Is that the Buzz thing? Busby. Yeah, someone... Oh, someone yes, it is Busby. Busby. Yeah, somebody, someone got that. Oh, Busby Berkeley, somebody did get that. Well, in that case, we don't have anything. <laughs> I was trying to pad my part, I guess, a little bit. So I don't really feel so bad. Nothing left over from jazz or big band? No, no, everybody. No, we've got very few questions along. Uh, you know, re, re, no, Nobody partly picked those categories. I feel so bad. Huh. I have a movie recommendation for everyone. Yeah? Toy Story. Okay, Toy Story. Toy Probably Story, Toy Story. Probably the best movie I've seen all year long. Really? Is that right? It is amazing. The world's first computer, computer animated uh, full-length feature film. So funny. And it's just, it's an amazing film. It really is. Okay, we'll start Wednesday night. Okay, well, oh, that's and there, there were people, put it this way, cheering in the movie at, at, at points, wow. actually clapping in the movie. Yeah. Tom Hanks considered that one of his toughest acting roles because, you know, he did all his parts alone. His, uh, all his voice work alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Tim Allen group. is the voice of Buzz Lightyear, the other character. Yeah. Don Rickles is the Mr. Potato Head. Okay. <laughs> hey, listen, I want to thank you, you all. In, a, in the, the next hour, that is, uh, it's not 19 after 2, and right after the 3 o'clock news, we'll be playing the dumb birthday game. And for those people who would like to play with us, the uh, number is 617-254-1030. Call Mike Epstein and, uh, and just beg and plead, and he'll ask you about 750 sensually oriented, kind of sexually oriented questions. I'll right, just call for that. Nursing. What's that, I'm please? just going to call for that. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. Well, he'll take notes and he'll pass them along to you when you get back. But I want to thank all of all of you. Uh, always a pleasure to have you with us, Tony. Thank you, Norm. If you want to call back after two or three and play the dumb birthday game, we'd love that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And uh, Jack, we'll we'll keep talking to you throughout the rest of the night. Yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, and and Ed, thank you very very much. And you're more more than welcome to stay. I just don't know how it's going to hit, how how hard it will hit at home <laughs> if you don't show up until till later this morning. But I, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. It's great. Okay. It's great to be here. I just got to go home right now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home to my mother's house and raid the refrigerator. So if she's listening right now, if you hear someone coming in, I got to get some uh, turkey and stuff. Right. Don't call the police. Yeah. It's, it's your son. It's your baby. It's your baby boy <laughs> coming home, uh, Joanne. Okay. <laughs> Somehow, the tape timed out perfectly, and we were able to hear all those answers to the outstanding questions that remained. Excellent job, Joan, editing out those commercials. I hope every one of you had a happy Thanksgiving. See you all next week. Closing the oven and riding the gravy boat home. For personal gods, Radiant Roasted Coffee, my cousins, Taylor and Bianca, the Chicken Pox, Leftovers, Patricia Mullen, Alliteration, Arthur Godfrey, Chesterfield Cigarettes, Osco Drug, Black Friday Traffic, Malls Backed Up to Other Malls, Fairbanks, Alaska and 38-Foot Antennas, Truckers, 
Junkie Certificates of Award, Rock and Roll, Jazz and Big Band, Musical Comedy, Christmas Music, Mike Epstein, Jack Hart, Ed Mullen, and the man with the padded partagus, Norm Nathan. I'm Tony Nesbitt.